The story for Kingdom Hearts Union Cross is a puzzling one. One which many either love or hate, but almost everyone finds confusing. Ignoring the fact that Kingdom Hearts as a series is already one of the most convoluted video gaming franchises out there, going from a small boy fighting darkness to fighting nobodies, having nobodies, that sounds like a STD, being data, waking sleeping worlds, and even time travel. God, the time travel. Welcome to the video guys, my name is Brian from KHUX Nation and today I'm introducing you to my paradox that I've, as far as I'm aware, discovered. Now before I get started, let me quickly make some things clear. One, I will be talking about Union Cross lore and maybe revealing spoilers, so watch at your own risk if you're not up to date. Two, all of the following concepts mentioned in this video, unless otherwise stated, are pulled straight from the game's cutscenes themselves and were put together using logistical reasoning. Three, this could very easily just be some oversight that's happened on the developer side of things and may not actually mean anything overall. But if it's not, and it's intentional for, this could be very potentially be a subtle but massive foreshadowing for the future situations and or problems that may come later in the story. Now with that out of the way, take the following information as you will and let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below in, of the video. Throughout the course of Kingdom Hearts Union Cross, there's always been a select amount of facts that the player has always consistently held true as the story progresses. One, the Keyblade War is inevitable. We see this in Kingdom Hearts key back cover and Union Cross as each union prepares for the war, particularly Ava creating the Dandelions to let the light of the world live on and transpire even after the Keyblade War. 2. The Keyblade War happens. Everyone but the Dandelions quote unquote die and the world split. This has been mentioned throughout the Kingdom Hearts lore most famously mentioned by Kairi's grandmother on a repeated basis. The same is also implied and shown throughout the story of Union Cross. 3. After the war, the new Union leaders meet and carry on with the Dandelions to restore the world. Somehow. Now throughout my entire time playing and making YouTube content for Union Cross, these mentioned facts have never changed for me. And I feel that I can safely assume that the entire Kingdom Hearts fanbase would agree with me on those points too. After all, everything I mentioned in those points came straight from the source material, the cutscenes themselves straight from the game. However, as I was updating my The Story So Far video from uh, for Union Cross that I update annually with all of the additional story material that's been released each following year. Most notably, the Keyblade War cutscenes that were recently reintroduced from Kingdom Hearts Kai to Kingdom Hearts Union Cross. I happened to have stumbled across a major paradox while working on the project. Something I would have never noticed unless I actually was organizing the events of the Keyblade War cutscenes in chronological order like I was for the video. Now in order to explain why this paradox exists, or even understand what the heck it is, I'll need to establish, or re-establish depending on how well you know the Union Cross lore, some well-known key points from Union Cross. 1. Strelitzia, remember her? She went to the shed where she dies after her Cherithy reported spotting you, the player, going inside it after talking to Gula there. Now for any of you wondering, we know it's after talking to Gula that Strelitzia's Cherithy is referring to when he reports to her about our location because of the fact that both of these occurrences happened before the Keyblade War as mentioned by Lorium upon investigation about her sister's disappearance and whereabouts on top of the fact that during the actual cutscene at when talking to Gula shortly after it then cuts away and mentions that a few months later the Keyblade War actually occurs. On top of the fact too that this is the only time that our player character has ever actually entered this room for the very first time which was only during that one time before the Keyblade War. 2. Strelitzia quote-unquote dies before the Keyblade War. 
We know this because shortly after becoming a union leader, Strelitzia was desperately searching hard to find our player character to try and recruit us to join the Dandelions and save us from the fates of the Keyblade War. Later on, Lorium even mentions while investigating about her sister's disappearance that the incident must have occurred before the war since it happened before the bells, which signaled the start of the Keyblade War. 3. When the new Union leaders met up, they met at the Keyblade Graveyard. This is shown in multiple cutscenes showcasing each of the new Union leaders for the Dandelions. 4. After our talk with Gula and Ava's talk with Lushu, the Keyblade War doesn't happen until months later. This is straight from the cutscene and isn't any sort of an interpretation. 5. During the Keyblade War, it's assumed that any quote unquote dead Keyblade wielders left their Keyblades behind at what is now known as the Keyblade Graveyard. I would say this is a safe assumption, of course, since it's stated in the lore that everyone would perish in the Keyblade War, as mentioned by the Book of Prophecies. And I don't see any other reason for thousands and thousands of Warriors of Light to just suddenly throw away their only means of fighting the darkness. Like, that just doesn't make any sense. Now, after establishing all of these facts, just to help out, this is essentially what the timeline is supposed to look like based on what we just mentioned. Starting off, we, the player character, meet up with Gula along with Skuld, where he tells us about Ava and the Lost Page. Shortly afterwards, Strelitzia's Charity notices us entering the ability and goes and reports that information to Strelitzia, who then, later on, comes by to the Gabin, barely missing us, and that's where she ends up dying. Days later, Lorium, the last of the new Union leaders of the Dandelions, meets up with the rest of the Union leaders. From this point, a few months pass by until the start of the Keyblade War. The Keyblade War ensues, and anybody aside from the player character who was not a part of the Dandelions ends up disappearing, leaving their Keyblades behind. Now with these points laid out, here is where things start to become interesting. If we look back at the scene where Larium meets the new Union leaders, we can see that everyone clearly meets up at the Keyblade graveyard, which at this point is believed to have happened after the war. However, the problem is that this cutscene, according to the timeline, occurs within the same exact cutscene as the death of Streletia, which, according to that cutscene, that same cutscene, means that Lorium met the new Union leaders days after Streletia's death. Which, according to the cutscenes, which also means is months before the Keyblade War. Feel free to go check out Quest 730 in the app itself and just watch the cutscenes. It's literally straight from there. It will show you exactly the same thing that's, that I'm showing you. The problem is, is that when you take a look at the cutscene of Lorium meeting the Union leaders, there are Keyblades in the background embedded in the ground. Seeing the Keyblades in this cutscene shouldn't be possible if it's before the Keyblade War, since obviously no one has fought to even remotely leave any Keyblades behind yet, since the Keyblade War hasn't happened yet. Now up to this point, some of you even might be wondering, well, it's very possible that maybe there were Keyblades there before the Keyblade War, which is honestly a very reasonable rebuttal, okay? However, this is already proven false because of the fact that within the actual Keyblade War cutscenes themselves, uh, during the cutscene of all of the unions congregating together at the Keyblade Graveyard to actually duke it out and fight during the war, you can clearly see before the field gets filled up with the people that there are no Keyblades laid out at all whatsoever so far yet. At the Keyblade Graveyard at the chosen location. Keyblades couldn't have existed before the Keyblade War happened because of the fact that during the Keyblade War cutscene, they show that there are no Keyblades there yet. So with that in mind, the question now, why the heck are there Keyblades there? And if the Keyblades are presented where the new Union leaders meet up for the first time, that begs to differ at what point in the timeline are they meeting up? Because it clearly is in the past, but but logically it shouldn't 
that shouldn't be possible because of the fact that the Keyblade War needed to have happened first. So this, my friends, is the Keyblade Graveyard Paradox. My mind is still kind of dumbfounded, to be honest, at this discovery. And if it truly is an intentional detail that they put in there, it may actually be a huge key in the lore towards figuring out all the time traveling shenanigans in Kingdom Hearts lore, or just might be some loose end uh, that they need to cover up later in the future. I don't know, we'll see. But other than that, that was it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed my little Union Cross lore video. If you'd like to see more videos like this, go ahead and leave a like and subscribe, as well as hit that bell button. It's the best way to know when I upload more videos such as this one. My name is Brian from KHOX Nation. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace, guys.